So in today's Trove News, we're in search of the world's first offshore oil rig. If you're interested in finding out more about oil rigs, this is actually the fourth video we've done. And here are some of the uh, thumbnails. You can find them on our YouTube channel. So there's been a long history for oil and gas. And uh, today we're going to look at some of the key milestones in offshore drilling. Now, it's not a, a full retelling of all the significant wells ever drilled, just some of the key highlights. What are the wells marked significant milestones in the industry? Why don't you write a comment below and we'll look into it. So when it comes to the earliest offshore wells, if we uh, look back through the history books, we can see that some of the earliest wells were drilled from piers. And, and this is a shot of uh, California. The first well was drilled on the Summerland offshore oil well, or oil field, in 1896, according to this. Now, this is really just uh, drilling from a pier, and I guess a pier is an extension of the land. So is it offshore? The photo, round about 1901. There's another claim here in 1891, it's the Grand Lake St. Mary's, which is located in Ohio now. It was an artificial reservoir, and uh, so it's no more than seven foot deep. So the explorers, they'd been following the Lima, Indiana trend to the banks of the lake, and then they started to uh, push on into the lake and started drilling wells, and uh, they were drilling in that body of water, as it said. These are quotes from uh, local government bodies. In less than 10 years, more than 100 wells were drilled within the shallow waters of the lake. Well, the next contender is the Caddo Lake rig, which was drilled in Louisiana in 1911. And you can see there the plaque that we can find today, the world's first overwater oil well. It's often quoted as being the, the world's first offshore well. But that's not true. The area was first drilled by J.M. Guffey Petroleum Company, who went on to become part of Gulf and today are part of Chevron. Now, there was a Guffey employee who noticed gas seeping from the lake and uh, bubbling water in about 1907. So a few years later, they got hold of the, uh, the tract and uh, they uh, spent a significant amount of money for the day. The well was called the Ferry Lake Number 1 and uh, was completed in 1911. It produced 450 barrels of oil per day. Now, it was a wooden structure built on wood, wooden pilings in the shallow waters of the lake, and the oil was piped to the shore. The reservoir was the Lake Cretaceous Woodbine Formation, and it was uh, at around about a depth of uh, 2,100, 2,400 feet. Now, another claim to uh, being a first was the Creole field in the Gulf of Mexico, and this is in 1938. Now, it was the first oil field discovered in the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico in a water depth of about 14 foot, about a mile and a half offshore. Drilled by Superior Oil, who later became part of Mobil, now ExxonMobil, and there were 140 wooden piles that were driven 27 foot into the seabed to support a wooden deck. And now, that measured 180 by 320 feet. Uh, it couldn't be moved once constructed, so they were taking a chance. If they didn't find oil, everything would have had to be written off and just abandoned. But it was designed so that the deck could be washed off in a storm and then reconstructed, so um, it was really there to just protect the, the very expensive piling, and the equipment would be removed if a storm was threatened and then, um, then put back in place once the storm passed. Oil piped to the shore, um, it was um, producing from three sands in the middle to lower Miocene, between five and six and a half thousand feet, and it's estimated it produced four million barrels in 25 years. Now, some wells from the platform actually drilled at angles of up to 44 degrees, so this is deviated drilling, or reach, or extended reach uh, drilling, and um, it just shows this technology has been around for a long, long time now. We would recommend a great article that's in the uh, Offshore magazine, and uh, that's by Joseph A. Pratt. There's, there's a reference there. Next up, well, I used to work for Kermagee, and uh, I remember that the company was very proud of the fact that it had drilled its first well out of sight of land, and it was the Kermac 16, and it was in the Gulf of Mexico in, in 1947. It was actually 10 and a half miles offshore Louisiana in about 18 foot of water. It was in the uh, ship shell block 32. 
the rig. And there were 16 steel piles driven into the seabed with a barge moored alongside yeah, the platform. An ex-Navy tender barge, um, which housed the crew and the equipment. Now, it was semi-mobile. If the well was unsuccessful, the tender would take most of the equipment away and move to a new location. It was well constructed because a few weeks after drilling had begun, back in 1947, a Category 5 hurricane rolled through, and, yeah, the rig survived. Now, it went on to drill about 30 wells and produced for about 37 years now. The numbers seem quite low, just one and, uh, one and a half million barrels and 300 uh, million standard cubic feet of gas, but, um, yeah, it was uh, very, very successful. I know uh, all at Camagee were very, very uh, proud of this achievement. Now next we come to uh, Mr. Charlie, another great innovation and step forward. And this was in uh, 1954, built in New Orleans. It was the world's first module or mobile offshore drilling unit. It could drill in water depths up to 40 feet and uh, it drilled over 200 wells in its time. The uh, cumulative drilling depth said to be uh, 2.3 million feet. Uh, it was operational for 32 years. So it was named Mr. Charlie after Charles Murphy, a key benefactor in funding the construction of the rig. Now, you can actually see the Mr. Charlie rig. It's uh, at the uh, Rig Museum in Morgan City, Louisiana. And here's Morgan City, just west-southwest of New Orleans. Next, we come to Scorpion, which um, was a significant uh, step forward. It was the world's first jackup. And this is back in 1955. Designed by R.G. Letourneau, it was actually made for uh, Zapata offshore. And the CEO at that time was none other than President George H.W. Bush. And here he is in this picture here. Um, and here's his son, George W. Bush. So uh, two presidents of the United States in one shot. They uh, drilled the first well for Standard Oil Texas, and uh, the second platform, Van Garoon, was built in 1957. These were the only two rigs in the Gulf Coast to withstand Hurricane Audrey in 1957, so they were well made. Moving on and uh, looking at uh, another first, and this was the first semi-submersible rig. So here's a picture of the, uh, the Blue Water rig. Uh, this is uh, 1961, again, Gulf of Mexico. Now, apparently it wasn't meant to be a semi-submersible. It was a four-column submersible. That's how it was designed. But uh, the pontoons were not sufficient to support the weight of the rig. So they decided that when they were towing it, that it would actually be partially submerged. They couldn't get all the ballast out uh, from, the, uh, from the legs. And so um, they noticed on the way that it was actually a very, very stable platform. So Blue Water Drilling and Shell decided to operate the rig while it was still floating. In 1962, it set a record for drilling in 297 foot of water in the Gulf of Mexico, three times deeper than any other drilling unit. And, and this is how the, uh, how the semi-submersible rig was born. You can see here the derrick is actually uh, laid down horizontally here. And uh, these, these kind of looked like um, shacks and warehouses built onto the frame. And, uh, of course, there really isn't a deck here as such, just uh, open gaps. So there must be uh, walkways that uh, keep the workers from falling into the sea. The first purpose-built semi-submersible, which was the Ocean Driller, was, uh, was launched a couple of years later. So, obviously, the design seemed to work, and uh, 1963... The first purpose-built semi-sub. So turning our attention to the North Sea, here's a picture of the Sea Gem. It was a rig working for, actually owned and operated by uh, BP, back in the mid-60s in the North Sea. Now, it was actually a converted barge with uh, these 10 steel legs attached and uh, jacked up out the water. And it drilled the first commercial discovery in the North Sea. That was the West Seoul gas field down in the Southern North Sea gas basin. Now, it was actually the fourth well in the British sector. There were three previous wells, but they were all dry. Wasn't the first offshore well in the North Sea, which was drilled in 1964 in the German sector by the uh, the Mr. Louis rig. 
But that one had a blowout hitting some uh, high pressure nitrogen. Interesting. Um, considered too dangerous for commercial exploitation. So the Sea Gem, well, it drilled a well to 10,000 feet. It uh, actually found gas in the Rotligan, the Permian Reservoir, sandstones, and West Sol. It eventually started production a couple of years later in 1967. It's still producing today. Ultimate recoverable reserves, somewhere in the order of 2 trillion cubic feet of gas. But just days after the discovery, 1965, the rig collapsed in a storm and it capsized. 13 people died. Now, um, my friend Alan Holmes, he met with uh, BP's uh, then chief executive, Bernard Looney, a few months ago. And indeed, uh, BP are considering putting a memorial uh, together for the victims of the, the CGM disaster. Now, you can find out more in our video we did uh, well about a month ago, and it's uh, entitled The Ten Worst Oilfield Disasters. Now, it's a sensitive subject. But it does give some indication of the challenges that there are in the oil and gas exploration and production business. So, have we identified the first offshore drilling activity? Well, probably not. So, uh, here's uh, some research that we've done. The records and the times not entirely reliable, some sparse information, and sometimes we find contradictory sources. But it seems highly likely that the first offshore wells were actually in Azerbaijan, in the uh, Caspian Sea. Now, some state that the earliest offshore wells were dug, interesting, in Azerbaijan, as far back as 1803. And here's a reference to that. First offshore oil production was in 1924 at Bibi Haybat. First floating production platform, 1934. Uh, the first metal platform, 1935. Now, we've got very limited information out there on the internet. Uh, perhaps some historian will uh, actually look into this in more detail, but it seems likely that uh, the claims of various wells in uh, the United States being the first are actually unlikely to be correct. And there's probably more information to be gleaned on these Azerbaijan earlier drilling operations. So now if we skip forward to 2016, this is when the Ocean Great White was built. Now this is Diamond Offshore and uh, here's some footage from their website and uh, this is what a modern, well in fact probably one of the most modern and uh, indeed one of the biggest rigs and you can see full of complex equipment really sizable thing massive inside these rigs are, are so impressive now this is a, um, a giant sixth generation harsh environment dynamically positioned semi-submersible rig it's got a, a 15,000 psi bop it can work just about anywhere in the world it can drill down 10,000 foot of water depth and as you can see it's a huge huge thing currently working for BP in the North Sea. So in summary, what have you learned today? Well, despite claims from various wells in the US, it's highly likely that uh, Azerbaijan were the early pioneers of offshore drilling. Less well known, less well documented, but uh, certainly information seems to point that way. The US Gulf of Mexico was indeed a, a proving ground and uh, certainly there were lots of innovations and many steps forward for offshore drilling uh, in that sector. The industry has had a, a history of forward thinkers and innovators. Some of them went on to become US presidents. We've come a long way. Well, what milestones did we miss? If you can think of any and you think it's worth adding, then please put a comment below. We want to try and get as, as full a record as we can. Thank you so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to be informed when we come out with our next videos. Thanks for supporting our channel and we look forward to seeing you back here before too long. It was in the uh, ship shell block three. It was in ship shell block 32. Um, difficult to say.